love and your kindness towards us and the blessings you have given unto us with light and truth and victory over sin. We thank you that you have given us wise counsel that we are able to handle ourselves and to be sanctified from all wrongs that we may maintain sin freeness. We ask of you to be with us with your spirit of truth as we study the Bible, that we may learn the truth and that we may be able to preach the truth as the end draws near. Grant us the vision and wisdom we need for the end, that we may testify of your great love in the study of these prophecies that we are going through. These mercies we ask of you, loving Father. Thank you for hearing us and blessing us. In Jesus' holy name, Amen. Amen. Okay, we turn to Revelation chapter 18. Okay, we turn to read from verse one to verse four. Is it found? We read. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hole of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven say, Come out of her, my people, that he be not partakers of her sins, and that he receive what? Not of her place. Now what you have seen here so far, remember we have studied from verse 1 to verse 3, and you have seen the, the denunciation of of Babylon, and then you see we are being told, come out of her, that you receive not of her, please. So we know one thing for sure. When this message passes, the plagues falls. Amen, brethren? Amen. When this message passes, what happens? The plagues fall. If you do not therefore receive of this message, what will you be partaking of? That's how you know. This is the final message for the earth. You know it is the final message for the earth because if you do not receive the benefit, you will have to partake of those plagues. Now if you do not want to partake of those plagues, what would you have to do? Come out of Babylon. Just if you want to Now, what have we seen here from the last week? Last week when we studied, last week when we studied this chapter, let me read for you again what we found out. We found out from the studies that we went, that went through so far, that the last days of the earth makes us face a particular situation. 
you ask, what kind of situation we face? In these last days, we face a situation where the population of the Earth is divided into gigantic, widespread, particular religions. You have seven billion people upon the face of the Earth. And the end of this world, or the year 2012, brings us to seven billion people divided up into gigantic religions. Hundreds of millions are Buddhists. Over a billion are Hindus. Over a billion are Roman Catholics. Over a billion are Protestants. Over a billion are Muslims. We have seven billion people divided up into gigantic religions. That's what the end of this world meets us facing. Remember we discussed that, right, brethren? Yeah, yeah. Amen, brethren? Yeah. We also found out that we have, you know, we have, we have found that the, these religions are publicly sustained by the governance of the earth. Yeah. That's the scenario we find ourselves into. These religions are publicly sustained by the governments of the earth. In fact, if you were to go and speak against the Roman Catholic Church in France, it would be a crime. So, so, so we, we, are, we are in a situation here where the world is divided up into gigantic religions, and these religions are publicly sustained by government. Point number three, persecution is being used to enforce religious dogmas and practices. That's the state of affairs we're going to find ourselves in shortly. Revelation 18 paints that picture that the large generation of Christians are going to find persecution being used to enforce religious dogmas and practices upon the face of the earth. Once you are alive upon the face of this face of the earth, these are the things you are going to see. Now the Bible says the wicked will not understand what is going on, but you are expected to what? To understand. Is that understood? Yeah. Furthermore, we found out that in these religions, demons or evil angels are using these religions to ensnare the population of the earth. That's what we found out in our last study. So that if you enter into Buddhism, into Hinduism, into Islam, into Catholicism, into Protestantism. Demons are using these religions to ensnare the people of the earth. Amen. You may sit here and watch and feel secure, but always remember there are billions out there that are not secure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because these religions are being used by evil angels to ensnare them. Yeah. We found that out. We also found out that powerful religious leaders used by devils inhabit these religions. Yes. Whether it's the Dalai Lama, or the Pope, or Pat Robertson, or some top Islamic scholar, or the VHD in India, we found that powerful religious leaders used by evil angels inhabit these religions. Amen. So as they begin to speak against them, these religious leaders spring into power, and then work now to try to stop true Christianity. I was even told today that um, Mr. Sat Maharaj are seeing a lot of Hindus leaving the religion and joining evangelicals. And yesterday, he said on the radio, I was told, that he's gonna talk to the Attorney General to try to stop it. Because the Attorney General has vowed to be a die-hard Hindu. The woman that destroyed the Murutis is an evangelical woman. An Indian woman, but an evangelical. So she wants to be Hindu. So now he's using these things. And he has issued a new war statement, like he did when he gave all the tracks. Right? Calling upon people to drive the Christians out. It's against the law. 
But they wouldn't have a sense for that if we say, drive the Hindus out in the morning. We need their fighting us if they're hiding anywhere. But they didn't find him. And he actually said that on his um, radio station. They see powerful religious leaders used by Satan and his evil angels in having these religions. We also found out that these religions communicate satanic experiences to the teeming millions upon the face of the earth. I looked at some pictures, some frightening pictures sent from England this week. And in these pictures, Muslims are protesting in the street of London. And they have states statements saying, kill those who insult Islam. And nobody reported on the news. No police stopped it. If a Christian had said, kill the Muslims, they'd have called him a terrorist. You see, the experiences that these religions are giving are what? Evil and corrupt. And evil experiences are being communicated from these religions to the teeming masses of the earth. That's the scenario you find yourself in in 2012. And finally, we found out that gigantic business corporations are making billions of dollars from the ignorance of the people and from the state of affairs that these religions have placed the world's population into. Because these religions have caused the world's population to become ignorant and weak and to love superstition and to love folly, gigantic business corporations are therefore making money on the ignorance and stupidity of the population. This is what Revelation chapter 18, 1 to 3 shows us. And as we discussed last week, into that state of affairs, God will send a group that is called Yahweh's army. The most powerful Christians ever known to man. And they will gain their power from the word of God. You live in that period where you have that opportunity to be part of it. Amen, amen, amen. If you will discipline your mind, listen to me. If you will take your Bible, and I always say this, if you will take your Bible and read one scripture and think about it, reason it out, take a paper and write out what you understand, you will strengthen your intellect and be prepared yourself for the next stage that you can be one of that Yahweh's army. Amen. And this is the reason why sometimes I come to some of you and I ask you, what did you write? And those of you who put your names down for baptism, I will stalk you for your writing. Amen. I have one good man. She's baptized already. So we are going to assess what you are doing with yourself. And even though you're not getting baptized, you know I'm still going to come at you to show what you, you need to show what you have been doing. Amen? Amen. Because in this church, no one is left me. Amen. And there's no dumb dogs in there. Amen. Everybody here must learn for them. Amen. So we are all ministers. Amen. And we all have to minister. Amen. Amen, brethren? Amen. So now we go to this one. This is where we take off from. And I heard another voice from heaven say, Come out of her, Lord, my people, that you be not God, partake of her sin, and that you are, receive that of her praise. Stop right here. Now, this another voice from heaven is not another angel. It is the same angel whose message is divided into two. The first part of this fourth angel movement, 
describes the corruption of Babylon. The first part of the message. The second part of the message is a call for you to get out of Babylon. Amen. And this is what we read here. So when you see another voice of heaven, the angel makes a statement exposing Babylon. But that same angel makes another voice. And the other voice tells you, based upon what I say, what should you do? Come out of Babylon. This is what we need to look at now. Turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 28. Now those of you who do not have a Bible, please let me look in your, in, in your Bible if they don't have one. And if they don't know where to find it, please help them find it. Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 28. It says this, verse 28. The voice of them that flee and escape. Have you found it? Yes. The voice of them that flee and escape out of the land of Babylon. To declare in Zion the vengeance of the Lord our God. The vengeance of his what? Yes. Temple. Did you see that? <laughs> so in symbol, the temple symbolizes the church. Zion symbolizes the church. And here in ancient times, we are told those that flee out of Babylon were to declare the vengeance of the Lord because of his church, because of his temple. And so likewise, these people are called to flee Babylon to show what Babylon has done to God's church and what Babylon has done to the temple of God. And this is the reason why we are given this message to come out of Babylon. We have to flee Babylon to show the vengeance of God for its temple. We have to show the vengeance of God for what Babylon did to his people and his temple. Is that understood, my dear? Amen. The fourth angel movement, the first part of the message, shows the moral fall and deterioration that have been progressing in Babylon. The second part of the movement's message calls to the people to leave Babylon. They are to leave Babylon to escape what? Iran. The plague. Yes. Turn to Jeremiah 51. <laughs> and we will look at verse 6 first of all. Verse 6. What we are told. Here is the parallel. In other words, this year, is where Revelation uh, 18 verse 4 is taken from when the message is given. We read, Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her work. For this is the time of the work. The Lord's vengeance, he will work. Render unto her a what? Recompense. Did you see that? That's what we are called to do flee out of Babylon. If you have given up the false teachings of those religions, and you are here, you have heeded that call. But you have heeded the preliminary call. The general call is to be given by you. Amen. But how can you say what is wrong with Babylon if you don't know? Mm -hmm. And this is why you are here. You are here to understand what is wrong about what? Babylon and what you should do. That's why this is a school. Look at verse 45 to 47. Verse 45 to 47. We are told, My people, go ye out of the midst of her, and deliver every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Lord. Unless your heart faint, and we fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land, a rumor shall both come, one 
shall go come one year, and after that, in another year, shall come a rumor, and then what? Violence in the land. Ruler against what? Ruler. Therefore, behold, the days come that I will do judgment upon what? The great images of Babylon, and the whole land shall be what? Confounded, and all the stains shall fall where? Did you, see Did you see that? So all this applies as to what will happen. We will hear rumors of movements to destroy Babylon. And when they hear those rumors, you know that the end is near. When you hear the European Union already declare that Europe is no longer Christian, but secular, that is rumor number one. Because it means to say that they have achieved destroying the influence of Christianity from where? Society. All is left for them to do is to physically destroy those religions which we studied before in Revelation chapter 17. So you are living in the time when rumors are circulating that false religion is going to be destroyed. But for that to happen, religion will be slowly attacked by nations. Not this Sunday coming, but the next Sunday, the 22nd, no, the 22nd is the next program. But this is five weeks. And the 22nd is the take television program. And let me tell you this. You are going to see footage where the police actually come and grab a Bible from a person who's preaching in the United States of America and, put, and lock him up and tell him because he's preaching that captive audience. Which means the people can't walk away because of where they are. Have you ever heard any madness? There are rumors already circulating that false religion is prescribed to be what? Destroyed. And so you know something terrible is about to happen. You live in this time. So that's why you cannot be lazy. You cannot be secular. You cannot overlook getting yourself prepared. Amen. And you cannot afford to be weak. You need now to learn more than you have ever learned before. But you know the devil will come and try to shake some of you. I tell you evil things about the church. Call the church cult. It's all kind of wicked thing. But the aim of it is to make you turn away from the truth. They will never take their Bible and show you justification by faith. Righteousness by faith. And call it in you. Never happen. And listen to me carefully. Yeah, I'm coming to you right now, brother. Come here. Listen to me carefully. Are you hearing me? They will never take their Bible, open it, and show where Tuesday is teaching something wrong. They can't, because they don't know. So they will say what? Filthy rumors to destroy you. When they do this to you, pull your Bible out and hand it to them and say, show me some truths of Jesus Christ, the power of salvation, why I should leave. Amen. 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 And if they are not able to tell them that you are doing the work of Satan, which is the accuser of the Amen. That is not a method Jesus uses to win people. Amen. He has never once used it. You will not find Jesus using that once to win people. And always remember, if it could happen to somebody else here, it could happen to you. Amen. 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 Therefore, follow the right position. Go. Well, I mean, uh, you know, it's just this week that very same thing happened to me. You know, I was approached by two Adventist brethren who I used to fellowship with. Yeah. And they were like, what you doing to see yeah, you know better than that, you know? <laughs> you um, study the Bible long and you know the truth. You know, and they were telling me all kind of foolishness about to see about who is a cult and something like that. And I was just listening to the remarks, you know? And after this, these brethren left, you know, I went and I prayed about the whole situation and I said, Father God, you know what it is I was actually listening for? I was children will not talk now when the services will not. The children will not talk now. They will keep quiet. Yeah. All the children will keep quiet. Yes, Lord. I was actually listening for the criticism to the point 
that in the Bible say that every idle word that we speak, we shall give up full complete judgment. Yeah. You know, I was actually listening for that. And I heard it coming out of these two brethren mouth. You know, and I continued to pray that was, and the very next day I woke up. You know, and the Spirit impressed me to send a, te a, a text to one of the brethren. And when I sent the text message, you know, I got some remarks that brother, you're going astray and you don't know what you're doing and you're leading the babes in the wrong direction and God will hold you come to the man. I was just laughing at it in my mind because I knew they were talking nonsense. Because from since I've been here and I've heard what I have never gotten when I was there, you know, I see that there's a big difference. And I decided that I would stand on my own feet and I'm, I'm still challenging them by the grace of God. Because these are two persons who say they know Brother Medina and Brother Medina are going astray. You know, it's a whole lot of foolishness I was listening to, but I just listen, you know, and I prayed about it. Amen. They all know me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it of myself in South when I'm right up in Port Alright, uh, <laughs> But you see, I, let me just say this one more thing. Is it, it is a shame. Listen to me. It is a shame for a Seventh-day Adventist to call to the account. Because Seventh-day Adventists have been called out over and over by evangelicals. And they did not like the name. They did not like the name. Now the people who they know following Adventism, they are calling them cult. Do you know what I mean? They are now part of Babylon. So we are the new cult. What do you say? It's a shame. It's a shame. The next person that watch you in your face and tell you that there's a cult, you tell them shame on you. Shame. Because your religion has been called a cult and you didn't like it. Now the people who are following exactly what you should be doing, you are calling them cult. Yeah. It's a shame on you. You have to watch them in your face and tell them it's a shame on them. If they can show something wrong, show it from the Bible. Yeah. But I, I, I guarantee you one thing, they will never, ever be able to take up their Bible and show where we fall short. Because the issue for them is not Bible. Adventists are set there, as Mrs. White put it, to Rumamonga. Their work, Mrs. White says, is to cast aspersion upon the genuine brethren. That's the work they can do. That's the only work they can do now. If they were to do anything else, they would join us. Chapter 10 and verse 16. 
Is it from? Verse 16. Jesus speaking. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, then also must I bring them, and they shall hear my voice, and they shall be what? One fold, and what? One shepherd. Did you see that? So Jesus is using the principle of having other sheep, but they are not of his fold. He says he must bring them, so they will be in one fold, and have one shepherd over them. Is that understood? So it means then, therefore, that in those religions of Babylon, they are sheep. Some of them are sheep. But they must come out and come into the fold of the truth. And when they come out of the fold of the truth, when they come out of the come out of the Babylon into the fold of the truth, then they will all be God's one people. Amen, brethren? Amen. Amen, brethren? Amen. Let us get two examples of this. Tell the Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. From verse 26. Verse 26. Is it found? We read. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south, unto the way that goes down from Jerusalem, unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, and a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all the treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot. Read Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he should come up and sit with him. And the place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb dumb before his sharer, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, whom speaketh the prophet? Of whom speaketh the prophet this? Of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began on the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came to a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What not hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the child to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the Nima, and what did he do? Baptized him. He baptized him. End of food. Yeah. Let's just come here and assess what we have seen here. Let's assess what we have seen here. What we have seen here is that since the temple and the veil was rent in twain, and the veil was rent in half, we have seen that no service in the temple was what? Was right or legitimate. There was no temple service that was legitimate. But yet this eunuch from Ethiopia, who was the treasurer of Queen Candace, went up to Jerusalem to do what? To worship. To worship in a service that was not of God. To a service that was condemned. And then he went up there to worship in this service where Tony was going back home and he couldn't understand certain parts of Isaiah. And God sent Philip to talk to him and to bring him to the truth. 
And only when he accepted Jesus Christ and was baptized, then he became a full fledged member of Christ. Amen, brother? Amen. But before that, what did we see? He wasn't a member of God's church, yet was he God's people. Yes. That's right. So when he says, come out of her, what? My people, he means those who are under what? Conviction. Did you get that clear? He means those who are under what? Conviction. Amen. Like he did not want. He was under conviction. And he was called out to accept Jesus Christ. Then get baptized. So when you are calling people out of Babylon, there are yet people in these religions that have what? Conviction. Is that understood? Yes. And this is not the mass of the people in those religions. Just a small percentage. Yes. And your last message is to gather this small percentage out of where? Babylon before the plane fall. Amen, brother? Yes. Amen? Yes. We have a next example. I wouldn't read it now, but I'll point it to you. With Cornelius. He was a Roman. And he did a lot of good ethics and works. But he wasn't a Christian, he wasn't converted. And God sent Peter in vision to go and meet Cornelius and his people and preach the gospel to them. Yes. And the same gospel of Mark in a small nutshell. The same gospel of Mark in a small nutshell is what Peter preached to Cornelius. And they accepted the truth, they were baptized and they received the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So here is another example of somebody who is what? God's people, but yet they are not yet what? Converted. When he said my people, he means people who are under what? Conviction. But not yet what? Converted. Amen, brethren? Amen. And this is what you are called. You can tell people to come out of what? Babylon. Now why are you to come out of Babylon? What does Romans chapter 8 verse 4 say? Uh, Revelation chapter 18 verse 4 say? Look at Revelation chapter 18 verse 4 again. Eighteen four again. Let's read what it tells us. And I heard another voice from heaven say, What does it say? Come out of the what? My people, that you be not what? Partakers of the saints and what? You receive not of a place. The call to come out of Babylon is to encourage people to not partake of the sins of what? Is that understood? Yes. Amen, brethren? Amen. Now, how do you come out of Babylon that you do not partake of a sin? Is it just physically getting up and walking out of the church building here? Yeah? Absolutely not. Is that understood? Yes. Absolutely not. You have to find out how is it you come out of Babylon that you do not partake of a sin. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13. You have to understand how you come out of Babylon that you do not partake out of a sin. Of a sin. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13. Is it far? Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13. Is it found there? Yes. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13. Here is what it tells us. We read. Who has delivered us from the what? Power of darkness and had what? Translated us into what? The kingdom of his blessing. Stop right here. So they told God has did what? Has done what? Delivered us from the what? The power of darkness. And carried us into what? The kingdom of his blessing. Now the power of darkness is all the darkness of the teachings of Babylon. And it will take God to take us out of what? The false teachings of Babylon and send us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now what is this kingdom of his dear son that he's going to send us in John chapter 3, verse 3 and verse 5? John chapter 3, verse 3 and verse 5. Is it from? Yes. Verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, 
except a man be born again, he cannot what? See the kingdom of God. Now go to verse 5. Jesus answered, Very, very, I say unto thee, except a man be born of what? Water and of the word spirit, he cannot what? Enter into what? The kingdom of God. Did you see that? So in other words, you have to be born again to leave the kingdom of darkness and to enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen, David? Amen. Which is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. So it will take, when you are telling people to come out of Babylon, you are preaching to the person, they must be born again. They get that plan again, baby. Amen. That's what you're telling them, that they must be what? Born again. Now what does it mean to be born again? When you're telling people, listen to me carefully here now. You're telling people to come out of the Babylon that you will not partake of a sin. You're calling people to leave the sins of Babylon. If you're calling people to leave the sins of Babylon, to leave the sins of Babylon, they must be born what? Okay. Again. What does it mean to be born again? First John chapter 3, and yes, we know it, verse 9. Okay. First John chapter 3, and verse 9. Is it from? Yes, Verse 9. It says this. Whosoever is born of God does not what? Commit sin. For what? His seed be made in him. And he what? Can sin because he's what? And now we know the new birth is to be born of the word of God. The word of God becomes a new character. The new born again character. And since it becomes a new born again character, it is part of you. Because it is a born again character. And you cannot sin because you are born again. For you to sin, you must give up your born again character. So when you are calling people to come out of Babylon, you are calling for them to be what? Born, born again, again. To get a born again character. Which means they must be made what? Sin free. Look at it again in, in chapter 5 of the same first John. And verse 18. First John chapter 5 and verse 18. Let's look at it here. Is it from? Yes. We read. Yes. We know that whosoever is born of God, we know that whosoever is born of God, what does it say? Yes. It says not. But he that is what? Begotten of God, keepeth himself, and the wicked one what? So that's why when you're called to come out of Babylon, you're called to be born of God. That you would not sin. And when you are called to be born of God that you would not sin, the new birth also qualifies you to maintain your sin freedom. Why? How does the new birth qualify you to maintain sin freedom? Let's look at the new birth again and see what it gives to us to qualify us to maintain sin freedom that we will escape the sins of Babylon. Go back to John chapter 3 and look at verse 5 again. First of all, the Gospel of John chapter 3, look at verse 5 and 8. Is it found? Yes. So we are looking at a person maintaining their sin freedom. The new birth is supposed to qualify you to maintain the sin freedom. So we are looking at the Gospel of John chapter 3, verse 5, and another scripture to see what the new birth does to you to cause you to be able to maintain sin for you. Now look at verse 5 again. It says this, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into what? The kingdom, the kingdom of God. So he must be born of water, which is the word of God, Amen. and he must be born of the Holy One, Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Now what does it mean to be born of the Holy Spirit? To be born of the Holy Spirit is to be given the Holy Spirit when you are justified. Amen. Listen to me carefully. To be born of the Holy Spirit is to be given the Holy Spirit in your heart when you are justified. Let's look at the Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. 
Galatians chapter 3, verse 6 to verse 9, and then verse 14. Galatians 3, 6 to 9. Is it found? Galatians chapter 3, verse 6 to verse 9, and then verse 14. Now this is the reason why I've done this. You notice I've given you all certain major scriptures that I've quoted over and over again. That by now, everybody here would learn how to use those words, scriptures. Okay? Now I can bring a whole maze of scriptures. But if we, we, we give certain scriptures that we use over and over again, after a while, you yourself will become a familiar with it and familiar how to use it. It's part of being taught. Amen, brother? Amen. And that's the process we are in here. Amen. Right here in this show. Amen. So observe. Let's look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 6 to verse 9, and verse 14. You should be familiar with it. Let's read. We read. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. Did you see that? Yes. So Abraham believed God. There's a knowledge of God he believed. And God counted it, that which he believed, unto him for him to get righteousness. Let's read it. Verse 7. Know you therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. So if you have faith, the faith that Abraham had, which he believed, which was counted unto him, you are also called our a child of Abraham. That is a spiritual child of Abraham. It goes on. Verse 8. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen more. That's the other nation. True faith. Preach before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So when God told Abraham, In thee shall all nations be blessed, that was the gospel to preach Abraham. Abraham was being told, Your faith, if you keep that faith, that faith will have an influence way down, that other nations will see that faith. And when they accept it, in your faith, you, they will be blessed. That is what Abraham was told. And that's why the next verse tells us, so that they which be of faith are blessed with what? Amen. Did you see that? Amen. So Abraham believed God and he was justified. So Abraham got blessed by faith. Amen, brother? Amen. And we are told if you have the faith of Abraham, you will get the blessing of Abraham. Amen, brother? Amen. Let's read again verse 9. So then they which are of the of faith are blessed with whom? Faithful Abraham. So if you have the faith that Abraham has, you too will be blessed with the blessing of Abraham. Now the question is, what is that blessing that Abraham was blessed with to him? Verse 14 tells us. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. Which is that we might receive what? The promise of the Spirit through the faith. That was a big thing. So, in other words, the blessing of Abraham is to receive the promise of the what? The Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother? Amen. So, when you are born of the Spirit, it means you are justified by faith, which means you should receive the what? The Holy Spirit. Where? Yeah. Amen. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 6 tells us Verse 6. I'm reading it as the Greek text happened. And as concerning your son, God has sent forth the spirit of his son. Where? Amen. Into your heart, crying what? Well. Did you see that? Amen. So the blessing of Abraham is that the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in your heart. Now yeah. stop here for a while. <coughs> you say, brother. What Holy Spirit is dwelling in my heart? Christ called the Spirit the Spirit of truth. When he is the Spirit of truth, child, come. He shall be where? In you. So watch me carefully. 
when certain truths of the Bible dwell in your heart, that's how the Holy Spirit dwells. Amen. The Holy Spirit came in the form of a dog in the days of Christ. In the days of Abraham, it was in the form of Melchizedek. In the days of the apostles, he was in the form of clothing tongues of fire. But the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in your heart in the form of truth. Mm -hmm. That's why your Bible tells you the Spirit what? Is truth. That's why your Bible tells you what? The Spirit what? Is truth. That's how the Holy Spirit dwells in you. So if you think you just have a piece of doctrine in your mind that you're going and transgress to the wrong, excuse me, it is literally the Holy Spirit that you're fighting against. Amen. Did you get that clear? Amen. Because the Spirit dwells in your heart as, as what? That's true. And that, my dear brethren, is the gift of the Spirit. With that Holy Spirit of truth in your heart, the Word of God is in you. And if the Word of God is in you, you do not have to sin. Amen. So when the Holy Spirit dwells in your heart, He gave you sin free. Amen. But you can, you can remain sin free through the Holy Spirit remaining in your heart. Amen. You can let that Holy Spirit show you truth more as we study your Bible. Amen. That's why you are called upon to do research in your Bible. Amen. 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 Did you get that clear? Amen. Did you get that clear, my dear brother? Amen. From Nina. Yes, my dear. It also shows that um, to follow Christ, you have to be a Bible reading Amen. Christian. Yes. That's it. And you have to study the Bible in order to get truth. Amen. 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 Now, we just read Galatians chapter 3. We saw the blessing of Abraham is the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we are told the gift of the Holy Spirit is being justified by faith. Now go to Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. Is it found? Knowing that a man is not justified, what? By the works of the law, but by the what? Faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in whom? That we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall what? No flesh be justified. So here we are justified by the faith of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Do you know what you're looking at here? Justification by faith. But wait, we just found out that to come out of Babylon is to be born again. Amen? Amen. When the angel urges people to come out of Babylon, that they be not partakers of her sins, the angel is, is urging people to be born again, mm -hmm. which is justification by faith. Okay. You know why I stopped? You didn't see that? Amen. The message of justification by faith. Amen. The 18 Asian message of justification by faith. Amen. Is it Revelation 18.4? Amen. Amen. When Mrs. Mike said, the angel of Revelation. <laughs> from Medina, from Medina. So while you're looking at that, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 8 show that the justification that is true faith is also the gospel that was preached. Amen, amen. LNG White taking up a reproach. Amen. Here's what she says. I quote. In 1888, in the general conference held at Minneapolis, Minnesota, mm -hmm. the angel of Revelation 18 came down, came down to do his work and was what? Ridiculed, what else? Criticized, and what else? Rejected. And when the message he brings what? Again, first in front of Christ, it will again be what? Ridiculed, and what? Spoken against and rejected what? By the majority. Mm -hmm. Do you know? What happened in 1888? I quote, Testimony to Ministers and Gospel Workers, page 91 to 92. This is right speaking. The Lord in His great mercy sent a most precious message to His people, to Elders Wagner and Joe. This message was to bring more prominently before the world the uplifting Savior, the sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. It presented 
justification through faith in the surety. It's inviting the people to receive the righteousness of Christ, which is made manifest in obedience to all the commandments of God. This is the message that God commanded to be given to the world. It is the third angel's message, which is to be proclaimed with what? A loud voice. That's Revelation 18.4. Amen. And to be attended by the outpouring of the Spirit in what? A large measure. Did you see that? Did you see that? Amen. You see that? Amen. Now let's just stop for a while and ascertain what we just found out here. Let's stop for a while and think what we just found out here. Brethren, we found out that in 1888, a special message was sent to the end of the church. It was this same angel in Revelation 18. But the angel know that Advent is supposed to have come out of Babylon already. Amen? Yes. So the angel was explaining the nature of justification by faith that takes you out of Babylon. Amen. It was being given to the Adventist church. If they had accepted that, it would have united, it would have been together with the sins of Babylon and the world would have finished already. Amen. They actually rejected justification by faith that would have helped them to finish the work in the world. Yes. And if the Adventist church do that, they'll be going back towards where? Babylon. An interesting story was told to me today. I sit down with an Adventist guy. And the Adventist guy says, you know this Pastor McKenzie? Who has some religion, what they call it? Some religion? He said, do you know what caused Pastor Mac McKenzie to go that way? He says, McKenzie was one of the strongest Adventists in Bible prophecy. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. He said Mackenzie went to Guadeloupe and, and, and Mandy, which are French colonies in the Caribbean, to preach. And he exposed the papacy and preached the papacy. The Catholic Church complained. The French government called the governors in Martinique and tell them they can't be preaching about the Catholic Church. So when Mr. Mackenzie reached back in Trinidad, he was called to the South Caribbean Conference. The conference told him he should not have preached against the Catholic Church and they suspended him. They suspended him because he was preaching at Ventura. But they see they destroy his faith. So now he went wrong. I went way, way off. Now notice who, who spoiled him. It wasn't the French. Yeah. It wasn't the government of China yeah. It was the very conference that they so we should do. Yeah. Did you see that, my dear brethren? All because he was preaching the right thing. I am saying to you, my dear brethren, the Adventist Church can do that. And listen to me. If any of you step in any country in Europe, in Spain, in France, and you say you can read Spanish or you can read French, and you buy a copy of the Great Controversy written by Ellen G. White, you will read all the statements against the Catholic Church removed from those in the church. Mm. The conference has done that. <laughs> That's the people they worship. What are they doing? They have lost their voice to say, come out of oh, But you only lost that if you lose a sense of the gospel. That's yes. right. Yes. Amen. If you reject the fourth angel's message, then you will soon lose sight of what Babylon is. Yes. That's the reason why today, Adventist prophecy is saying Babylon is a meeting, is a state of mind. Here the Babylon is a state of mind. They no longer identify the apostate religion of Babylon. 
It is now just what? A state of mind. That is why Mr. Clive Dutton could be so united with the Hindus in Trinidad. Because by the Hindu temples, Mandir was attacked by an evangelical woman, an unstable woman from the evangelical church who was a Hindu. The evangelical church sent a delegation to apologize to Sat Maharaj. Dutton went with it. What does he have this church have to do with that? If the evangelicals do that breach, let them go to their apology. What does that have to do with Adventists? Why are you so secretly safe of these churches? Do you know what this means, my dear brethren? What happened in 1888 was a rejection of this message right here. Amen, amen, that's true. And when this is right, says the third angel, this is justification of faith. You see where it is in Revelation chapter 18 verse? Oh. Revelation chapter 18 verse? Oh. That's where the message is. Mm. Do you get this clear, my dear brethren? And this is what is terrible. This is what has happened. Mm. But watch. The effort to come out of Babylon is to leave the sins of Babylon. One must repent and believe. Then he's justified, which is being made sin free. And when he's made sin free, he is brought to obey the Ten Commandments. Amen. 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 Let's look at all of this sermon from Mark chapter 1. Yes, sir. Um, Is it from? So Jesus said, repent and what? 
believe. That verse 39. And at him, all that what? Believe, believe are what? Justified. justified from all things for which you could not be justified under the law of Moses. Did you see that? Amen. So when you repent and believe, you are what? Justified. Did you see that, my dear brethren? Let's see what justification does in person. Romans chapter 6. Verse 6 and verse 7. Romans chapter 6. Verse 6, 7, and 22. We read. Romans chapter 6, verse 6, verse 7, and verse 22. Let's see what it does. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be what? Destroyed, so that what? Henceforth, we should not what? Still sin. For he that is dead is what? Free from sin. Now go to verse 22. But now being what? Made free from sin and become what? Servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end what? Everlasting life. Right. So when God justifies you, makes you sin free. The old man, which is the old way of sin. If you move, and the body of sin, which is the perverted? Emotion. The perverted? Emotion. Are inactivated. So that hence what you do not want? Sin. For he that is dead, the old man, is free because sin is what? Free from sin. You remember it? So if you're free from sin, then you are what? Sin is free. That's what justification does. It makes you become what? Sin free. Now let's see what justification does again. Look at chapter 3 of Romans. Verse 30 and 31. Verse 30 and 31. See here now. Verse 30. See here now. It is one God that shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void in the law through faith? What does it say? Void in faith. Yeah, we want. Establish the law. So when you are justified through faith, you are made to do what? Establish or keep the law. Justification doesn't make you a transgressor. Justification makes you obedient to the what? The law of God. So if you are told to come out of Babylon, which is God causing you to be born again? Which is God justifying you? Which is God giving you this new Holy Spirit in your heart? Does this make you break the law of God? No. no. What does it make you do? Keep, Keep the law of God. Therefore, you can't stay in Babylon. You automatically do what? You leave Babylon. That is what happens. So it is the message of justification by faith, which includes the law that calls people out of Babylon. But wait, hold on. If God is calling people out of Babylon, therefore he's calling you to keep his law. What about his law is he telling you that Babylon has made a mistake about? James chapter 2, 8 to 12. James chapter 2, verse 8 to 12. Let's see the mistake that Babylon has made concerning the law of God. James chapter 2, verse 8 to verse 12. Is it found? Amen. We read. If you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, you do what? Well. But if you have respect to persons, you commit sin and are convinced of the law as what? Transgressors. For whosoever shall keep what? The whole law and yet offend in what? One point he is guilty of how much? All. For he that said, do not commit adultery, said also what? Now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, 
God become a what? Transgressor of the law. So speak ye and so what? Do, and then it shall be what? Judged by the law of the And that is what Babylon does. Listen to me. Babylon makes you break either one, two, three, four, or five of the Ten Commandments. Some say, don't keep me Sabbath. Some say, everyone is God. Some say, God is not Yahweh, but another God in the Middle East. And all kind of teaching anyway. Some say, they don't have to keep the Sabbath, but keep Sunday holy. In other words, some say, if you have no God out there, you are the God. No matter what they teach, we are all teaching you to break what? The law of God. That's what Babylon is doing. So when they tell people to come out of Babylon, you are telling them to come out of breaking God's law. Did you see that? Amen. Now go to Isaiah 24 and verse 5. Isaiah 24 and verse 5. Isaiah 24 and verse 5. Here is the Bible telling you why the plagues will fall upon the earth. Listen to me. Here is the Bible telling you why the seven last plagues are going to fall on the earth. Remember they tell telling people come out of Babylon and they do not receive of the plagues. Now here is a scripture telling you why the plagues will fall on the earth. Let's read. Isaiah 24. Verse 5. The earth is also what? Defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have what? Transgressed, Transgressed the Lord. What else? Change, Change the ordinance. What else? Broken the everlasting covenant. By the way, the word ordinance is wrong. The word is statute. Statute means something solid that cannot be moved. Right. So the earth is defiled under the inhabitants. The people have defiled the earth because they have transgressed the everlasting covenant. What is this everlasting covenant that the earth has transgressed that is causing destruction? Turn to Exodus 31, 13 to 17. Exodus 31, 13 to 17. Is it found? Believe. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, say, Verily my Sabbath you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am Yahweh, that do not what? Sanctify you. this he said, let me keep the Sabbath as a sign, okay? This is a food sign. Keeping the Sabbath is a fruit of conversion. Amen. But it is a sign also. Amen. It goes on. You shall keep the Sabbath there, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work daily, that show shall be cut off from among his children. Six days may work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, holy to Yahweh. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath, throughout their generation, for a what? Perpetual covenant. That is the term everlasting. Perpetual means everlasting. Did you see that? So what is the everlasting covenant? The seventh day Sabbath. Did you see that my dear brother? The seventh day Sabbath is the everlasting covenant. So when we are told the inhabitants of the earth have defiled the earth because they have transgressed the laws, changed the statute, and what else? <coughs> oh, the everlasting covenant. What is that? <laughs> so something is going to be happening on the whole earth mm -hmm. that is going to force people to break this out. 
Who can know what to do? Sunday. 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 That's right. You see it? There you see it. There you see it. And we are told, therefore, have you played before the years? Mm. Amen, brother? Amen. So you are literally calling people to get away from Babylon that they will not be found transgressing the law of the God. Amen? Take your Revelation 16 now. Revelation 16. And we will look at verse 2 and then verse 10. So you see, my dear brethren, leaving Babylon is indeed escaping the seven last days. For they fall upon the population that make up Babylon. When they leave Babylon, they escape the world. Seven last days because they fall upon what? The population that make up what? Babylon. Let's look at that here. Revelation chapter 16, look at verse 2, it tells us, And the first went and poured out the fire upon men, the earth, and they fell in noisome, grievous song upon the, the men, which had what? The mark of the beast. And upon them which, which one? Worship the image. image. Did you see that? Yes. Now go to verse 10. And the fifth angel poured out the fire, upon the seat of the beast. Mm -hmm. And his kingdom was what? Full of, of darkness. And the Lord was down for the day. So, so, so the seat of the beast. The beast is sitting on the world. So the seat of the beast is the world. So what we are being told is that upon the world, the plague falls. Mm -hmm. So if you are a member of Babylon, that is those powerful religions that divide up the population of the world. When the plagues fall, they'll fall upon you in the world. Amen. So you are called to come out of Babylon. Amen. That is one of those big powerful religions that divide up the world. Mm -hmm. To escape the plagues. Amen, baby? Amen. Amen. But you can only do so if you are found in one. Obedience. Mm -hmm. Did you see that, my dear brother? Amen. Did you see that? Amen. And that is what your Bible is telling you. Mm -hmm. So what did the Adventist church do? They rejected the actual prophecy of justification by faith from in Revelation chapter 18 and verse 4. As a result of that, they can never progress until they accept it. Until that, they will just keep on going on. Back and on. Back and backsliding until they find themselves persecuting those who are obeying God's commandments. They've already started calling them cards. Show your voice now. I'm smiling because, right? Yeah. In um, within Revelation for, um, 18 4, right? Yeah. It is proven that the message must be given by Seventh day Adventists. But yeah. a particular type of Seventh day Adventists. They must have the 1880 message that they must receive it in order to give it and they must have the kind of character and the experience in order to give the message. So when, so when it is given, it is talking about a particular Adventist that pours the 1880 message and has the experience of sinfulness when they give it the message. You know, and that's my idea. Amen. 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 Yeah. Because we can see that we have made the right move. Because historically, since we have come on the scene, we start at justification by faith. And over the period of time, we have slowly worked out the evidence and come to the right revolution. We have made the so really God has really taken us where they should have moved since they had got the sign of the evidences of this message coming. Mm -hmm. But we receive it 
And the evidences laid on can never be removed again. Amen. Because remember, we've come to the time yes. when Babylon has lost control over the gospel. Amen? Yes. So they can never hide it anymore. Yes, brother. You know, um, Brother Medina, um, just recently I was talking in the letters, well, you know, and I came across a quotation where it says um, that Sister White says that Adventists who seek a truth will leave the general conference and the least of the Adventists and they will actually establish a church for themselves. You know, and some of the quotations was from Tony Wrighton. And I was sharing that with another Adventist brother and he was saying, yeah, he believed that this to happen, but not now. You know, and I was like, "Don't you be that close guy in the last days, and you're actually seeing what is happening." And he, he, he was saying basically that he will take his no and you know, and so a lot of craziness. You know, he was talking about. That's, about his, op that's his opinion. So his opinion is it's not now, but that can be fatal for if people follow it. So, so, so it is actually now that we have to leave. And I've seen it and I've been trying to prove it to them. I tell them, what you need to check it out and they will not do it at all. Right, listen, let me say this to you all, brother. This church here, this church here is a Seventh-day Adventist church. Amen. The difference between us and them is we are not controlled by the comfort. No, yes, there is no scripture that says to be God's church, you have to be controlled by a conference of ministers. That's right. Amen? Amen. Amen. There is no scripture. In fact, scripture speaks against that. That's right. Amen. If you search through the spirit of prophecy, the writings of Mrs. Wright, from the earliest writings to what she says just before she died in 1915, there is not one statement that says to be a seventh heaven, you have to be under conference control. That's right. So, we have not gone against the Bible. We have not gone against the spread of prophecy by being free from conference control. Is that understood? Amen. But what we have done, we have saved many people who would have been lost and left already eternally. had they been under conference control. Amen. Eternally. And listen to me one more time again. Two here. It's not a new religion. The word Tunzia does not identify a new religion. It is an adjective. It describes what kind of Seventh-day Adventists we are. Amen. Those that have given up selfishness for the sake of what? Love, Love the God and their settlement based upon the sacrifice of Christ. Christ. That's all. The Adventist so listen to me carefully. This year, so some people will say about Seventh-day Adventists. This year is a Seventh-day Adventist church. Yes. Amen. 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 Are you listening to what you're Amen. 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 Are you Amen. Amen. Amen, Brother Medina. You Amen. You are a Seventh-day Adventist. Amen. The only Amen. difference is that the comforts don't control you. Amen. Yes. Yes. You should be glad about that. Amen. Because Amen. I've made up of myself who need to be under the control of the Holy Spirit Amen. Themselves. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank God and for that. I seem to rule other people. Right. Yes, Brother, you have a Just to, to come and tell us he's um, not Adventist. I just wanted to also say to on the quotation that I checked out on the internet where Sister White said that the Brahman would be the Adventist church. She also said that they would have a name for themselves, which is Seven Day Remnant. You know? And when I saw that I you know, I thought about Kuzia because I tell myself I said, well, Kuzia is already the, the seven day remnant. You know? And this is what she said that the People who leave the seven day Adventist church under the general conference will call themselves seven day remnant. Rather than seven day Adventists. Yes, we have a group calling themselves seven day remnant. And the group that is calling themselves seven day remnant, that same group, they are not teaching really Adventist teaching. They, prof they profess to be doing that. And let me tell you this, listen to me. We studied this here before, but there are a lot of people here that that did not know what we went through and study already. Mrs. White identified why we should have those in the name that we have here. Amen. Let me tell you why. The word Adventist means looking for the coming of all Christ. Right. Yes. Those who are looking into the sanctuary in the of the devil speaking of all. They see the judgment going on. And just after the judgment, we can Christ up. Amen. 
So you are showing that you are looking for the second coming of Christ. Right. The name also goes back to why we as a church started off in 1844 mm -hmm. as Adventists. Mm -hmm. Now the word seventh day shows that you have the sign mm -hmm. of centuries. Amen. Which is the seventh day Sabbath. Amen. And this is mine says, this is the name of our faith. Mm -hmm. And she says, it's a name we shall not go from. Mm -hmm. But she also said this, that God's people will be called every Tuesday mm -hmm. That is those who receive the 18 18 mm -hmm. Right? Okay? Amen. Yeah. Those are right and choose the after the word of the word of Write it on the top of it. You can write it. Yeah, just as she said, God's people would be called and choose the after. In testimony, in some of the certain that we would have. Write it on the top that everybody can see. E-N-2-S. Right? Yeah. 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 Did you see that? Twice. Twice. In testimony, the minister of Angels wrote that she said, God's people would be called what? They need to encourage and compass by a spirit of sacrifice. And remember what the psalm is. 50 tells us about the last people Amen. upon the face of the earth that faces the judgment. He says they have God, it says, they have made my covenant with me by sacrifice. <laughs> and the Greek word for sacrifice is what? Yeah. When we chose that name, we didn't know those things. They actually bounced up. Why we chose the name after the name was chosen. <laughs> and by the way, this is why it says. The final warning at that time when the name for all television and radio program was chosen in way back, we never knew this. She said the final warning will be what? Amen. So we are actually doing the right thing. Amen. Amen. And God has given us these evidence for the Lord. And Brahmina, it, it, it means also that we have the revealed truths of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And what I will do, I will take some of the teachers that are sent there, and I will show you all. What about them? Why they have tried their best to do a lot? You see, the point about it is they don't have the Holy Spirit. You see, what about this church here? Listen to me. Listen to me. The good thing about this church here, no heresy. Amen. No Amen. false doctrine. God. We are here, we are not under conference, conference, conference control. Thank you know, you see, God. people need to understand you can survive without a conference. Amen. It's not a conference that they can be free from, 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 from heresy. Here we are, we are, there's no heresy in this church. Amen. Meanwhile, the Seventh-day Adventist church have been affected by three or four different heresies. Mm -hmm. Some of them say they have to keep the feast. Mm -hmm. Some of them say 2520 is prophecy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you see that? Amen. And very soon, I am going to show you the concept of God that the Adventist Church has is the same concept that the Catholic Church has. Mm -hmm. And it leads you one step from saying Jesus has holy flesh. That's why the Catholic Church is going to prove that. So I saw three hands, I saw his hand first, and then I saw Sister Lee's hand, then you, and then you go there, right? Okay? Yeah. And about reading, where yeah, Sister White said, for a few men to act as kings over their brethren, that is wrong. Yeah. Right? And that's what they that's what the, the type of government that we have a government or a governing body controlling us as churches is exactly that. Few men acting as kings over their brethren. Amen. Amen. Yes, Sister Yeah, but I don't know. I find that this church is very nice, very important. I think how you tell it, I think it's Amen, amen. Amen. You see, because they did not have justification by faith, truth, it could not arise. You see, you see, once you don't have justification, nothing else has to be worked out. The counsels that it was given by Sister White in respect to conference. 
to when she spoke with her own conference, she spoke differently to the ideas that we are presenting now. She knew about setting up churches from state to state to state, free from man ruling over it. And it was men who had been justified and had been experiencing the good of God in their heart, going from place to place, setting up churches. So when conferences would meet, it would be men who were led by God meeting together, discussing the present truth to go back out to the vineyard and preach the gospel. But when they talk about conference, it's to muzzle them out from preaching that same gospel. And this is what is the heresy that they are entertaining under administration. And none of our brethren are in churches that we do we have a conference controlling all of them? No. Each person mind their own work. Business Amen. in Christ. Amen. 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 And we have sisterhood and faith. Amen. We are united in faith. Amen. Amen. That's why we are so cooperative with each other. Yes, brother. Um, on the concept of our calling as an offshoot, you know, and yes. meditating upon it and so they need to understand the Bible or the description of an offshoot. I offer to someone who is cut off of Christ, who can speak all their mouth. We don't have that experience. Mm -hmm. They should call for themselves or should be, because they identify themselves as Laodicea. Mm -hmm. Have any experience of Laodicea, who can speak all their mouth. Mm -hmm. So they themselves, by the name, show themselves that they are off. Mm -hmm. so, so that's the reason why, whenever they come and tell me, um, you're an offshoot, I answer. Everybody is off shoot. Yeah. Everybody shoot off from everybody. Yeah. <laughs> because the church is an off shoot from the truth. Yeah. Amen, baby? Amen. The Methodist is an off shoot from the Anglican. The Anglican is an off shoot from the Catholic. Mm -hmm. And then this is an off shoot from all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is an off shoot? So, I'm saying to use the word off shoot in a derogatory way. You get the impression I say off to off to that's bad. Yeah. So it means to say the organization is right. Say so it should be controlled by the organization. Mm -hmm. That's the logic behind this say off yeah. Yeah. Right? So the point of I guess nothing more special about it. However, as Brother Michael said, you have to be where is your offshoot from the truth. Mm -hmm. Where is your offshoot from the truth? Then you are false. Amen? Amen. The Catholic Church is an offshoot from the truth. Mm -hmm. Right? You have to be careful that they don't become an offshoot from the tree. For mm -hmm. one and then two. Yeah, I just wanted to um, put us, uh, um, something that Jesus said. Yeah. The disciples came to Jesus and said, Jesus, you put up a lot of them doing the, 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 the picture in the name and thing. Jesus didn't say, well, that we deal with them. Or they are offshoot. He didn't, he didn't call them that. He recognized that they were speaking the truth. You understand? Yeah. He says, if they are not with me, they are against me. Exactly. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. They, they are preaching and they are with him, but they are not against him. Mm -hmm. But if they, were, if they are against him, they are not with him. Yeah, but look at the yeah. spirit of the disciples. They wanted to deal with the Amen. Amen. Yes, brother. Yeah. The main thing is, 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 the main thing from the head. Oh, they have all three, all three from here. So they, they, they don't hold, they don't, and can I did, they were up and up in bed, and you have no profit. Amen. Amen. So, brethren, we will continue this study again, okay? Amen. But that's what I have received. Yes. From Nina, and one of the things that um, one of the things that I thank God for too is that <clears throat> going from religion to religion to religion and end up in Tuesday Seven Adventists. I thank God that we have the truth, yeah. and I could I I I, I thank God that in all the religions in the world, in the false religions in the world, we have the truth in Trinidad and Tobago. So the brethren, when he was saying what he could, was saying, should I say amen harder? Because we have the truth, and the truth is what will make us free from sin. Amen. Um, what, will make the, what will make the difference to is what each man says in the last thing he He talk about that the only those who have fortified their minds with a systematic knowledge of the truth will be able to stand to the last great point. That is what will make the difference between the two seven 
and those that never will be saved. Right, and that's why we are studying. We are fortifying our minds. What do you say? Yeah. Okay, brethren. Know, one thing too, and one of the things that I cannot, I hate about Laodicea again, vexed with that now, is that every time somebody come to the truth, they always rumor mongering and causing the person to come out. I vex about that. Yes. Wicked people. Yes. Wicked, wicked people. Yes. You have to understand purpose. There is a purpose for all religions. Our purpose is to prepare people to have their passes blotted out. Amen? Amen. Amen. And to pay any hundred and forty for thoughts. Amen? Amen. This is why already, and I told you that it is in the spirit of honesty. Those, this is why I identified the purpose of those in Laodicea. She said it in Testimony Volume 4, Testimony Volume 5. Their purpose is to spoil the flock. <coughs> To use rumors to spoil it from that's, that's the purpose they are fulfilling now. That's why I hear me, hear me. Anytime somebody comes to tell you anything, and this is the warning, especially for those of you who are new here, they come to tell you something, tell them, take out the Bible, give me a scripture, and show me some truth why I should. That's right. And let this truth show that you're very now. They show me a truth, and that shows that they're wrong. I'm supposed to live by faith. Based on that truth. Amen. But if you open your mouth and you say vile things, they tell me to leave. Mm. You want me to leave because of vile things, as if Laodicea don't have vile things. Mm. And let me tell you, I know mm. Laodicea does have oh, yes. vile things. Mm. Yes. I know yes. that for sure. That. Yeah. Right? So the point about it is tell me the truth, yeah. let me leave because of the truth. They will never be able to. So in fact, if they start to study the truth, they will end up right here. Amen. Amen. Bible and we stand up for the truth and we let them spell the Bible, like use the Christian to know too. The Bible. They didn't study the Bible. Amen. And that's why when people here don't study the Bible, they might lose the and morality. They, they are caught by those things. So if you don't want to be caught, study the Bible. I always say, hear yeah, what? I stand. I can what? Do no other. And the Lord has what? Help me. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you for all the truths that you've given to us and for identifying the third angel's message of justification, I think, in Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. We have seen where it is, we have seen it there, and we know what message you want us to preach. Please help us, therefore, to learn these truths even more, to abide in the truth of eternal salvation, and to gain the truth of our faith. As we leave here to go home, Please keep us safe from our hands, troubles, dangers, and accidents. Until we meet again, in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.